welcome back to RGR Football. My name is Daniel Harms, and this week we're in a little bit of a recovery week. Terry Kill was traded last week. The team is kind of starting to look a little bit different. We're seeing impact players come in. We're seeing a plan put in place. And what I'm kind of trying to get through with some of these film reviews that we have now of players that have been added in lieu of having Tyreek Hill. You have Mark Valdez-Scantling now. You have Ronald Jones. You have five other draft picks. You possibly might have a James Bradbury or a Stephon Gilmore. We're going to wait and see what happens there. But today we're going to talk about Mark Valdez-Scantling and how he can contribute to this offense the way that he is. He doesn't have to be anything more than he is and how maybe the changing of the offensive dynamic can help continue him be that player that he was in Green Bay. Hopefully he stays a little bit healthier. He dealt with some injuries last year. But let's go ahead and talk about what he does best and what he's able to bring to this offense. So right off the bat, you're going to see him down here in the reduced in a reduced split. Make sure you guys can see right here. This is Marquez. I'm just going to call him MVS for everybody. Who knows? And this is one of those things that we saw a lot last year, right? Two deep safeties. Okay. So what does he bring? He just brings some speed. Okay. It's like they forgot he was that fast of a player to begin with. And when you have that type of speed, we've seen it. Tyreek Hill is a different element of speed. But you still have a guy who clocked in huge amounts of 22 miles per hour. Like He was one of those guys in the NFL that consistently got to 22 miles per hour. Tyreek Hill is completely different. You can't change what he brings, not just as a deep threat, but everywhere on the field. You can get him the ball in short areas and let him work. You can't really do that with MBS. He's not a twitchy athlete. He's definitely more of a an intermediate to deep runner who's really improved his hands over the course of the last season. I think in 2021, he had his best uh, drop percentage. He did not drop the ball nearly as much. And that's really, really good going forward. You need somebody, especially with his size, to have that kind of an impact. You're going to have him down here at the in the bottom of your screen. But the biggest thing I want I want to you know talk about are some of the things that he does struggle with. I think that he's... Oh, I apologize. That was the wrong person. I do that a lot. Oh, I know. I was right. I was right. I got distracted. I got distracted by the big play. It's not the big play. So this was right. Jalen Ramsey's on him. And this is one of those things that I was just kind of trying to mention that he's not the best route runner. So what we are looking for with this outward breaking route, granted, take it with a grain of salt, is against Jalen Ramsey. He's a very patient, patient corner who knows what he's looking for. So there's a little bit of a tell here. Clearly, he's not worried about him running by him. So he he takes too long to turn. It's like one of those things you see a boat start to turn. It takes him a long time to start to corner that. He doesn't break down very quickly, and then he just kind of like rounds it off. It, it's not the best route. It's not a very good indication of him being you know a yak player in the NFL in terms of what we saw Tyreek Hill do to that extent. Um, but he's still going to bring a different level of speed that you don't have outside of Tyreek Hill and McCole Hardman in the NFL. Those two guys were different types of speed and now you still bring in that speed element and that's what they're going to really look for look for with this signing. It's not going to be a guy who creates a ton of yak of opportunities, not a guy who is going to create a ton of separation, but maybe just maybe the Chiefs start to use a little bit more downfield passing into some 50-50 situations, letting your bigger receivers work. Mark Valdez-Scantling Mark Valdez is 6'4". He has that ability, or 6'3", something like that, to be able to go get the football. He's actually, like I said, he's improved his hands. And one thing I know that he did not knows how to do is create a little bit over the, the middle of the field. He's not afraid to go over the middle of the field to take hits and things like that. But understanding leverage is an extremely important part of getting those opportunities over the middle here he's gonna read this defensive uh, this cornerback here playing with outside leverage so he knows he's trying to get to the inside so he's gonna kind of lean in right there and, and break off it, that's what you're gonna expect from him um, I expect to see a lot of slants a lot of over routes a lot of deep routes a lot of double moves from him that's something that we can fully expect to see from uh, MBS and he's going to generate a, a pretty good number of opportunities and help hopefully Travis Kelsey at the attention on Travis Kelsey can help open him up as well because one of those things that we've seen is that Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey kind of made those defenses stay in the two high shells things that we've 
come to expect from other defenses are contributing to the poor ability of the rest of the offense when you have players like you know Byron Pringle to an extent I thought he did a good job of creating some separation there in his stint in Kansas City but that's not what they were looking for they went and got Juju Smith-Schuster they went and got Mark Bell Mark Fez out there Scantling you have now him and McCole Hardman and maybe the attention focuses on solely Travis Kelsey now and that might open up other players and maybe bring some of those two deep shells back we're gonna have to kind of see how that ends up working out but there is another area of his game that I think that consistently shows up on his film and that's working through contact something we've as Chiefs fans once again seen a lot of things go poorly working through contact and playing against man coverages not being able to keep your route going you know Tyree Tyree Kill Travis Kelsey do an excellent job of continuing their route through contact Byron Pringle Demarcus Robinson and you know Mark McCall Hartman aren't the best at doing that but MVS does that. You see, he works through the route. He comes through. He keeps going, accelerates through. And this is another thing. He opens up to the outside. This is more of a quarterback and wide receiver connection type of throw where you see that you have the deep safety here. And then as he's going to break on the ball, what do you do? You don't want to throw the ball here. You don't want to throw it on the inside because you have an opportunity now for that safety to go get it. Instead, you throw it to the outside where he can create a little bit of separation from the safety as well as the corner who's covering him. Open your shoulders a little bit to the outside and have that nice little connection with the quarterback to be able to throw this ball. That's something that Aaron Rodgers has done a lot of, knowing where to throw the ball away from defenders. And I think that we're going to see Patrick Mahomes take that kind of level uh, step with some of these guys, we've seen that Mark uh, MVS wants to get with Patrick Mahomes as soon as he can to catch some passes and try to see where he wants to throw the ball. I do think you're going to see his ability to play through contact show up on tape because it's something that just we haven't seen a whole lot in Kansas City. Now, again, he's in a reduced split on the left side of the formation. This is one of those things that it's not like a hugely great route. It's not against anything impressive but I wanted to just pinpoint his pluck ability you know going to get catch the football with your hands also holding that safety till the last second here you're going to see that him do that a lot I think he's a very good uh, vertical runner so he keeps his shoulders square vertical when he's trying to sell the vertical route and that way as a deep safety you can't tell if he's going to break left or if he's going to break right and he does a good job of waiting till that last second to really do that and then again this ball is beautifully thrown over that that cover three corner there and then you see mark Val, uh, mbs go and get it. i always want to say mark valdez i don't know why but you see him go and he catches the football that's another point that we're going to really talk about with him and i think that it really hits home in the next uh in the next clip his ability and how it's gotten much better and this this is like both of these plays were from last year so it's definitely been an improvement a marked improvement on his ability to catch these footballs you see right there again in the slot this time and that's another thing that we know Andy Reid loves the ability to play everywhere on the offensive formation outside in reduced split the slot everything you're going to see him work against press coverage outside oh sorry I did it again these numbers man I am so sorry guys so he's on the outside working against press <laughs> again but he's going to run a slant route this time that's why you see the little whip route. So this is MVS down here. He's working against outside corner with outside leverage. Step, break, catch, ball, boom. Like that's what you're looking for. I want to see the Chiefs use more slant routes and use more of these one on, these abilities against one-on-one coverage and throw them into some of these, these windows that the bigger receivers that the Chiefs have now can actually exploit. So... Some things that we're seeing, we're going to see from MVS are the vertical threat, the vertical stretch ability. His hands are, have definitely gotten better as his career has gotten, gotten longer. I think the connection with Aaron Rodgers was quite good. He's 27 years old. He's not the youngest player in the world, but you know he's got some, some good traits you're looking for. Size, speed, a little bit of downfield athleticism. He's not going to make you miss a whole lot. And again, he's not going to be very twitchy. He's not going to create a ton of natural separation underneath. But what he does 
what he does do is open up Travis Kelsey, open up uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, maybe open up McCole Hardman if they're going to be trying to do him, use him more in, in that aspect. So I, I like what they did bringing him in. It's not a hugely in-depth uh, money-wise signing, something that you can really look at them taking a two-year uh, basically a two-year trial period and then maybe cutting bait if it's not uh, working out for him but if it is you still have that other third year possible so Mar Marquez Valdez Scantling is going to bring another speed element they're not I don't think this is trying to replace what Tyree Kill did because you can't do that they're definitely trying to take what ha what Tyree Kill did and maybe move it around a little bit change the dynamic of the offense try to bring some of those safeties out because at the end of the day Downfield passing with Patrick Mahomes is what this is about. Running the ball a little bit will help too, but I think that Tyree Kill forced defenses just, just as much as Patrick Mahomes did to do that. So this might be a little big-brained idea, but I think that at the end of the day, outside of the money, this was a decision that that needed to be made. And I'm happy that Tyree Kill is getting paid. He deserves to be paid. He's going to have... A great career. I think his career would have been much better in Kansas City. I think we all think that, but the team collectively will get better. And most importantly, they got those picks to get younger at other spots on their team. So Mark Val Marquez Valdez Scantling is going to be and not an integral part of this offense, but a necessary part with the deep threat, with the intermediate uh, ability, maybe a little bit more jump ball, maybe a little bit more 50-50. So I'm excited to see what happens. I hope you guys are excited. Again, don't forget to hit that like, the bell, and the sub notification. We're going to continue to churn out more content. Tomorrow, I will have a Ronald Jones film review. More, a little bit shorter like this one is, trying to just make it so it's a little bit easier to consume, contain, and watch, and hope you guys enjoy it. Hit that thumbs up, leave a comment on anything you guys want, what do you guys want to see next, maybe next week, because I'm probably going to have some more draft stuff for you. Everybody, please have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more, and subscribe to RGR Football.